where debugging, or sometimes referred as profile-based debugging. We start with a short motivation. In the classic R3 world, where no problems debugging your code, there were business applications written in ABAP like material management, SD and so on. All the system stuff like the ABAP statements itself, screen handling and memory stuff were hidden in the kernel, because a normal ABAP developer did not intend to debug the kernel. For example, the kernel code behind a select statement should not be debugged. I think you agree that this is system stuff and should be hidden. This was done automatically. At the one side you had the business application and the kernel on the other side. Additionally, there were some system services and some decades ago the system programming concept was introduced. Using slash hs you could see some system functionality because you step into the kernel code. While using slash h this would be hidden. Today it is really complex. Many application frameworks in ABAP were developed which are very useful and your application is hidden in tons of code and many layers have to be stepped through to come to your application. For example, there are very technical frameworks like ESI and WebDimpro. To make it worse, WebDimpro generates classes and within the class you have some parts which are system stuff and some parts which are relevant for you in the application. So some developers would like to debug the framework, some other would like to hide it. In case you would like to hide the framework and are not able to, your productivity in debugging decreases. And nowadays we have got a layered architecture, perhaps 10 or 20 or more layers. If you would like, for example, to debug the persistent layer, you would have to step through all these layers and it would be so much better to step just to the layer you are interested in. The solution is software layer aware debugging. Now you can define which programs, which packages, which classes, which interfaces and which function modules are of interest for you. All other programs and classes can be hidden for you. Additionally, you can describe object set containing programs and classes to describe a component or layer and then you can step from layer to layer instead of single stepping. First you define an object set and select for example packages, classes, programs or functions as you see down here on the slide. You can also link them with AND or OR. Then you define how the debugger will behave according to the object set. You define if it is visible and if the debugger should stop if you enter the layer. To show the benefits of software layer aware debugging, we show the current situation and how it can be improved. For example, in a framework including many tools, a developer would like to debug one button in one special tool. For example, we go to the transaction SAS. As a developer of a tool within this transaction who wants to debug one button, he has to step through many, many statements. For example, we would like to debug this button. We enable the debugger. Press the button. and have to step through many, many statements until we get to the code of interest. Zero script standalone, subscreen handler, default script trace, again the subscreen handler and we are still not in the code of interest. This could be false. But don't go for a coffee expecting us to go step by step to the relevant code. We will use software layer aware debugging. We now show how to administrate, create and use a profile. The administration is done via the transaction SLAD.
On the left hand side we see the navigation screen of all existing profiles and object sets, the favorites, the local objects, here you can see the application components. The idea is that one describes a component which means to find all objects which belong to the component and all other guys can reuse the object set. You use an object set to define a set of programs and function modules that you want to debug using profile control debugging. You then use the debugger profile to specify the object set you are interested in and define the behavior of the debugger. So the first thing you have to do is to create an object set. You can create an object set regardless if the top profiles or object sets is selected. We create an object set OS class. We add a description. In an object set you can define selection sets. A selection set can consist of an individual package, a package with sub-package, a program or class, a function module or an implemented interface. In our case we select the class. OK, here's program written. Don't get confused about that. It's caused by the translations. There should be written program or classes. We go to the top classes and select our class. If you have more than one selection, you can link them via logical expressions. You can use for example AND, OR, ALL. The behavior of the debugger according to the object sets or layers is defined in the profiles. We create a profile. Its name is demo class. We add a description, demo profile, confirm, we choose our newly created object set and add it via drag and drop. Here you can see this object set is visible and the debugger will stop at the point of entry. You can also set that the debugger is stopped at the point of exit and that system code is considered in your object set. We save our profile. Here you can see that it is also an object connected to the transport management system. But in our case we save it as local object. Now we can use our profile. We will now debug using our profile. We go to the transaction SAS. We activate the debugger. And press our button. Now we enable our profile. We choose our profile.
We step to our next object set, pressing the button Next Object Set. We are now directly in the class we have defined. By using single step, we stay in the class. We make bigger steps and stop every time when it is called. You can also make a direct definition. We execute the transaction SE16. Look at S flight and you see it ends up with the ALF and we now would like to stop when the ALF is used. We enable the debugger. So it's a profile and a direct definition. We know that the ALF is within the package as ALF and as LIS. and are now directly in the layer of the ALF. We look at the stack and know now where the ALF is called. You can also use wildcards if you would like to stop in classes. You would use CL then. We now show you how Software Layer Aware Debugging facilitates your WebDimpro debugging. We have got a WebDimpro application and we will use the transaction SICF. With SICF, you can activate the debugger for a service of a WebDimpro application. We go to the transaction SICF. Choose the relevant service. and activate the debugger. We now start the WebDimpro application. Due to the large WebDimpro framework, we have to step through many statements until we get to the relevant code. We start in main task in the WebDimpro framework and go further on in the WebDimpro framework step by step and still have not reached our code of interest and this could take a long, long time. If some of you think about taking a cup of coffee, that wouldn't matter if we would go further on step by step in the WebDimpro framework. But do not go for a coffee. We will use software layer aware debugging. We configure our debugger layer. Select our profile. It's car rental. Confirm. And get to our point of interest in a few steps. This was our introduction of SLID. 
Now you can test it yourself. Thank you for your attention.